Good afternoon. I'm Vince Lisi here in Omaha, Nebraska with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services and Baskin Real Estate. Uh, and I want to talk about the real estate economy, what's going on in the market. And I'm going to steal something from my good friend Mark Brace out of Michigan, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Michigan Real Estate there. Uh, Mark, thank you very much for sharing this on the Chairman Circle Diamond Mastermind Group we did a couple weeks ago. He calls it the perfect storm. And I think it really explains what's going on in the real estate market. I continue to hear people say, should I wait a year? Are we going to have a lot of foreclosures and stuff like that? And, and the answer is, we believe that the houses, housing market, and we're going to walk through some data here, is going to continue to keep the prices where they're at or maybe even rise a little bit more. And so Mark goes through this thing called the perfect storm, giving a lot of facts. That one is we talk about interest rates. Historically, interest rates on a 30-year mortgage has never been below 3.5% until we came into this time of COVID. Then interest rates have been artificially reduced down to 2.5% on a 30-year mortgage, and now they're hovering around 3% for all practical purposes. Incredibly low interest rates, giving consumers incredible buying power, meaning they can buy more today than they could in the past. He had basically a graph in here showing that a 3% interest rate on the graph he has, you could buy a $440,000 house today, but if you took it that and moved it to a 4% interest rate, a year from now, you'd only be able to buy a $390,000 house. So that's a $50,000 spread, $440 to $390 by moving interest rates from 3 to 4%. Most economists are talking about the fear of inflation. We know in e economics that historically, when you're having inflation, they need to raise interest rates to try to calm that down. So I don't think it's unreasonable to think as we come out of this, people get vaccinated, and COVID is a thing of the past here, and we come into a new normal it's not unreasonable to think that interest rates sometime next year are going to creep to 35 probably 4%. I think that's a reasonable guess. The other thing Mark starts talking about is household formation. And we had for 10 to 15 years people saying, well, millennials aren't going to buy houses. They don't view homeownership the same as baby boomers and generations before them. But we have charts here that show that basically in the mid-90s that you continue to have more bursts every year. Now, that's the baby boomers that are now looking to buy houses. There was also baby boomers right, saying, we're going to rent, we're going to leave with parents longer. The truth is, COVID has changed this. COVID has made us look at a house not just the place we live. Now, COVID has made us look at a house that we work and we live. It's more important than it's ever been before. So when you look at that, we had population growth of new babies in the 90s to millennials. Now, the people buying that first and second time home, okay, we now look that people that were saying, I'm going to live in downtown condos, I'm going to rent longer, saying, okay, a house is more important, we want more houses. We also have population growth from uh, immigration. So population growth from births in the 90s, population growth for immigration. Household formations as of the all-time high. We have more demand for houses today. Some forced by COVID, some forced from facts that happened 30 years ago that are making us have a need for more houses than ever before. And then you combine that with the fact that the, over the last seven decades, uh, from 2010 to 2019, the number of new construction houses built in America was a fraction of what it was the previous six decades, dating back to the 50s. In the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and from 2000 to 2010, 2009, we built at least a minimum of 20 million new construction houses in America on an average of two to two and a half million houses per year. But from 2010 to 2019, for that decade, that slowed down tremendously. Again, people think millennials aren't going to buy houses. They're going to rent more. They're going to live in urban areas. We only built right under six million houses. Never in the previous six decades had we built under 20 million houses and actually even went up to 27, almost 28 million houses built in a year, down to right under six million houses. This is creating a problem. We've undersupplied the market since the crash of 2007 and 8, and now it's catching up. So this low inventory market that we have, we believe is going to continue for the next three to five years, meaning that house prices might stabilize if interest rates come up, but you don't gain anything by waiting a year because you're going to be able to buy less house at a higher interest rate. And if we do have a continued for demand, as we expect we're going to have, because we don't have enough new construction houses and new construction houses, as we all know, are skyrocketing. Lumber, but it's not just lumber. Lumber prices, electrical, plumbing, labor, land, concrete, windows, every one of those things are going up. So the cost of new construction is going up. The demand is high. 
but we don't have a lot, enough supply. So we believe existing homes will continue to hold or increase in value. We're going to have to continue to build over the next five years more houses than we have over, you know, over two, two million plus houses per year probably over the next five years to get us in balance with supply and demand to meet all the demand we have in the marketplace. But if you're thinking about sitting on the sidelines and think, I'm going to save ten or 15000 that I can put extra down next year, the truth is if rates go from 3 to 4% or higher, you're going to buy substantially less house than that ten to $15,000 you're saving. Guys, that's an update. Mark, I appreciate your input on what you call the perfect storm. Uh, I hope that this uh, data is informational to you guys and help you make, helps you make an educated decision when you're looking about buying or selling your house. Have a great day.